uncles told me, you know, I was DJing and then my uncles told me that um, I should come up to the studio and just vibe. And at the time it was Irv Gotti, Chad Elliott, who worked on all the Jodeci stuff. And, you know, and, and my uncle just, they, they built the new studio up in Yonkers and I would come up there for the summer. And Irv and Chad were supposed to teach me. But, you know, they was busy doing their thing. So I had to, you know, I got to watch them a little bit. But then I just started just figuring out, figuring shit out myself because it was taking too long. And then what I was doing was I wasn't doing tracks for artists. I was doing tracks, doing stuff for my mixtapes. So I would take a song that was hot and like add like different scents and drums and, and, and build over it so I could put them in a mixtape all new exclusives to sell in the barbershop where I was cutting hair at. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is like, uh, when I was 15, 14 or something like that. And, um, you know, so I had my barbershop gig going and I was giving haircuts and some, some uh, mixtapes. So that's how I was making my paper back then. So, so you, you, you had never taken music lessons or anything else like that? I mean, everybody I took a music class. I mean, right, but you, you were consistently. Nah, I did trumpet class, and my yeah. trumpet teacher passed away, and I was in music. <laughs> <laughs> you, know you know, in the Bronx, they ain't replaced nobody, so right. he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> no more trumpet. Hey, hey, nobody, the trumpet's over. <laughs> you know, but with, with, another instrument. Or? I mean, with that things like that made make me uh, participate so much in. You know, music in school and, and arts education and stuff like that. Because, you know, what if I did? You know, what if I did continue uh, with that trumpet lesson? How, you know, what what, what more uh, value would that would add to me back then? But who knows? Maybe I didn't need the damn trumpet class. Well, I think my sound consists of the South Bronx. You know, being in them streets and them in them back. And, and, and the parties in the back of the park with, with the DJ spinning, Karis one, Melly Mel, and you know, self destruction, you know, all of those movements going on where I was still a young buck, but I, I was always with the older kids. You know, I was with a breakdancing crew, breakdancing crew called GTR, Guarantee the Rock, St. Mary Projects. And, um, you know, I was just like the youngest in the bunch, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to Fever, you know, I was like my big brother, and I used to just be there, you know. I remember hearing T. La Rockish, Yaws, all these different things, and had the dance move, Levi's jackets with, the, you know, graffiti on the back, and, it, and I, I bug out because I'm like, damn, I was really a part of that. Not even knowing I was a part of it at that time, right? Just like now, it's like, we don't know what we're a part of right now, how legendary it is. You know, we got a little whiff of it, but who knows what the future holds, right? And back then, I was just having fun. I wasn't even, I'm like, okay, we dance, we listen to the music, boom, boom, I get to stay out late. That's what's up, you know? And, um, you know, my inspiration came from there. I never really looked up to producers because I didn't know any. I, was, I wanted to be K Capri. I wanted to be a DJ. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be, you know, 1200 Assassins. I wanted to be Ron G. I wanted to be... I wanted to be all those people. Because in my hood, the DJ was fresh. You know what I'm saying? So you grow up wanting to be that. You know, everybody was rapping, so I was like, yo, it's something about spinning that wax. And my pops was, was a DJ. You know, so that was already in my blood. And then DJ just transitioned into, into producing. But if I had listened to everybody, then I would still been a DJ. You know, um, I think I like, I like what I did as a producer. <laughs> yeah. You know? Definitely. I mean, when did you first meet Jay? I met Jay 17 years ago in his office with a cassette. He wanted to, you know, um, he was supposed to meet, he was meeting up with Dane Grease. And then my uncle, I went to the meeting and then played the tape. Next thing, next thing I know, we in the studio. You know, doing if I should die, um, coming to age two, um, forgot the titles, but all those shits. The cash money, uh, that came a little after. That came after. That came after. This he took the whole cassette. I wish I could find that cassette. That cassette was crazy. It had like thirty joints on it. Just 
Bah, bah, I never used to give a cassette less than 30 beats on it. I never used to make, I used to make 30 beats a day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I used to make 30 beats a day. I, I probably made 70 beats a day and kept 30 beats a day. Like, it's all I did. Like, I, I went to see my grandfather the other day and he, and he was like, man, you know, you, you know, all that, all that messing around up in that studio paid off, huh? <laughs> Cause he used, you know, cause we had the building. It was his building that we, we had the studio. So he used to come upstairs, turn off lights, you know, or check in the morning time, and I still be in there. He's like, man, you gonna go to school? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to school. I'm gonna go to school. I'll be up in there. You know, I remember having like marks on my face, like right here, and right here, and on my shoulder from like sleeping on the floor. You know what I'm saying? Like my my uh, hoodie or whatever I used to sleep on I used to move or whatever. And I'm on the floor and I'm like. Getting these little bruises on my face. I'm like, yeah, I got black marks on my face from laying on the floor. You know what I'm saying? But like, people don't understand that, you know, those different things that you've been through to be doing all the shit you're doing now. And that's why I respect, I respect, you know, what I, I respect so many things because I, I know, I know what it is to earn it. You know, a lot of people don't know what it is to earn it. competing against not just who's hot right now or who's trendy right now I'm competing against the whole Canada music like when I think about the greats like Big Daddy Kane and Rakim they still in my top 10 Kendrick Lamar is creeping up into my top 10 but he only put out one official official album and a couple mixtapes but Drake hit me up and was like yo I, I think people misconstrued in this tweet I just tweeted because I didn't he didn't hear about what I did and my said about my release party he was like yo you did rip that song and he was like, yo, I, I think uh, he said that line was from an intro on his album or something, so. 